chaplains, chaplains. They go out with the combat troops. They lead in prayer. They're there when people are dying. Chaplains have been a key part of the U.S. military for centuries. And even before the United States won its independence, now many Christian chaplains fear the military's acceptance of open homosexuality may prevent them from speaking about their biblical beliefs. Jennifer Wishon has this alarming story. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Their ministries follow the call of duty. Let's go! Their church is often a battlefield. Military chaplains are dealing with people in extremists. They're in life-death situations, not once, not twice, but very often every day. To produce Chaplains Under Fire, filmmakers Lee Lawrence and Terry Nicholson spent three months with chaplains serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. They wanted to provide a personal look at chaplains, their military role, and the troops' dependence on them. We show men and women who are in a lot of pain. We show the stress of combat missions, the stress of losing buddies. We spend a lot of time with casualties. And we show how the chaplains provide a variety of services for them during those times. Like conducting memorial services for troops lost in battle. Or greeting wounded warriors each step of the way during their journey to recovery. Spencer, you're in Germany, buddy. God bless you. Chaplains take on many roles, but their official job is to help the men and women assigned to them practice their constitutional right to worship freely. Now some chaplains wonder if a new military policy will affect their ability to stay true to their faiths. We're doing away with one don't ask, don't tell policy, but we're going to have another don't ask, don't tell policy, and it is if I hold biblical values concerning homosexualities, don't ask me about them because if you ask me about them, I'm going to have to tell you. Now that a court has ruled the military must end that policy immediately, the military is changing course in a hurry. That rush concerns chaplains of faiths that view homosexuality as a sin. They're waiting to see if the new policy causes a conflict between their job and their faith. This is uh, unique in American history where you have military policy at odds with uh, the belief system of the, of the chaplains that uh, they rely on. Ron Cruz served as an army chaplain for 28 years. Now he endorses other chaplains. He says there are more questions than answers from the Department of Defense. In this new environment, will a chaplain be able to pull out a Bible and read scripture? to a person he's counseling about sexual issues. We're concerned about that. Colonel Matthew Goff has served as a chaplain for nearly 20 years. He tells CBN News he's never felt pressure to violate his conscience and sees the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell as an opportunity. To minister to not only all the other soldiers who are staying in, of course, but as the uh, homosexuals who do join the military, uh, they need the touch of Jesus just like anybody else. So to stay there, to be able to minister to them when they have needs and in crisis, and God opens the door to their hearts, it's good to be there to do that. According to the Army, chaplains will continue to have freedom to practice their religion according to the tenets of their faith. Chaplains are not required to take actions that are inconsistent with their religious beliefs, such as altering the content of sermons or religious counseling or modifying forms of prayer or worship. But Cruz says there's already evidence to the contrary. During a briefing on the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, he says one chaplain asked the briefing general if he and others could continue to hold and speak their beliefs against homosexuality. The general officer said, Chaplain, if you cannot fall in line with this policy, resign your commission. Some chaplains have already taken that step. As a show of support for chaplains, a coalition is forming to provide legal and other support to chaplains who might be disciplined for sticking to their biblically held beliefs. No American, especially those who wear the uniform to serve their country, should be denied the right to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience. 
While the documentary Chaplains Under Fire doesn't address the issue of gays in the military, Lawrence says the chaplains she followed were able to remain true to their conscience. Everybody figured out a way to stay true to their faith while being open to all the soldiers and Marines. Chaplains pray that observation remains true as they face this new challenge of their military career. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Thanks, Jennifer. Joining us now is David French. David's a captain of the United States Army Reserve who served for a year in Iraq. David's also a lawyer, now serves as senior counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice. David, oh, good to have you. Well, thank you for having me. You're a chaplain for a year. Did anybody ever tell you how you could have a service, whether you could talk about Jesus or whether you could talk about the Bible or what you could talk about? I, I was a, a lawyer for a year in Iraq, a oh, JAG well, officer. You say, oh, I'm JAG. You, you were. But I'm I sorry. served very closely with chaplains, and no one ever interfered with our chaplain's right to express his faith. Okay. No one ever interfered with any soldier's right to express their faith, and that's a really important thing for service members to know: is don't ask, don't tell doesn't change their right to religious expression. And there's some confusion about that out there, and there shouldn't be. They, have their, they still have their right to religious expression. Well, uh, so what if a chaplain reads from the Bible and says homosexuality is an abomination before God? Can he do that? From their pulpit, a chaplain has the religious liberty in their pulpit to advance their faith. Absolutely, they have the right to do that. The sad thing is, and unfortunate thing is, there's a lot of confusion. And as we saw in the report, some generals apparently mm. uh, are giving some inconsistent messages. But the reality is a chaplain is still free in their pulpit to, uh, to advance their faith. So if he's counseling somebody, a guy comes in and says, I am burdened with sin and guilt. I want to know what to do. He can tell him. Absolutely. A, a chaplain has that liberty to still maintain their faith. Now, the problem is, as I said, it could, there could still be a lot of confusion out there. I've actually conducted Don't Ask, Don't Tell training, yeah. and there is confusion. There is a lot of confusion, and people do seem to believe that they can't share their faith anymore, but that's not true. At the ACLJ, we literally helped write the book on religious liberty in the military, and, okay. and our service members still have their religious liberty. Have you ever had any lawsuits to establish the rights of these people? Well, fortunately, it rarely has to go to, to actual lawsuits. Fortunately, the military generally does a pretty good job of correcting okay. its own ship. Well, they have the Uniform Code of Military Justice, and they have their own set of courts, so you'd have to go to court for, uh, before a military tribunal then, right? Well, uh, oh, most of the time, civilian. most of the time when you have a dispute in military law, it's settled within the military justice system. But fortunately, the military has been doing a good job historically, and we hope it continues, yeah. and we, we need to make sure that it continues. It's done a good job protecting the religious liberty of its soldiers. They know that religious liberty and faith is a critical part of the, the warrior ethos.